Hello, my name is Tunde Aikono, the pastor of the New Covenant Church, Stratton. Thank you for tuning in to watch the service. Enjoy it. See you later. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a
Indeed, every praise belongs to the Lord. Our God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Today, there is liberty to praise the Lord, to worship Him. So let's begin to tell Him how much we love Him. Because God is love. God is life. God is good. God is marvelous. So we sing, you are life. You are love. And of course, you bring light into our darkness. Thank you, Jesus.
Father's Day. Today we are going to perform a poem to show how much we appreciate all of the fathers here. Happy Father's Day. Though I am little, I understand that all the love you give to me, that all you, that all you will take my hand to show me the wonders of life. To teach me things I need to know, your loving way will guide me. Through each year as I grow, the years will go by quickly. One day I will be grown. I know I will always have your love and never walk alone. Today, almighty God, as we observe Father's Day, I lift all the fathers of this world up to you with adoration and love. Fathers play an integral role in the lives of children as mentors, providers, caregivers, and so much more, and also provide a firm foundation on which our children stand. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, for your provision and for showering them with your divine blessings. We pray that you will consecrate fathers and set them apart for your purpose. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day, Day from, from Sunday, Sunday School. School. Today's program, I asked Brother Digi and I said, what do the men want? Verbatim, he said, the men just want to be appreciated. We don't really want to be charged this year. When we get behind closed doors, we'll sort ourselves out. <laughs> um, so to honor that, we just want to show our appreciation. And I hope um, so far you feel appreciated, you feel loved. Um, so my part is to um, edify the men. But I have a message here from the Father of Fathers, our Lord God. Please bear with me and please listen. And it reads, My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and I know when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways, even the very hairs on your heads are numbered for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I choose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. 
I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complete expression of love. It is my desire to lavish my love on you simply because you are my child and I'm your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts towards you are as countless as the sands on the seashore, and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who give those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you were broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away all the pain you suffer on this earth. I am your father, and I love you even as I love my son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. It is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I'm not counting your sins. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I, I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father, and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? God is waiting for us. Be blessed. We have a father, we thank you, Lord. Happy Father's Day. We thank you, Lord, for loving us so passionately and so deeply. We thank you because you know us before we were born. We thank you because wherever you go, you are there with us. We say, blessed be unto your holy name, our Redeemer. We thank you, Lord. I have a maker.
presence of God. I want you to be free in the presence of God. Where there is freedom, where there is presence of God, there's a liberty. Be at liberty. You can move to the right, to the left. Be happy in the, in the house of your father. Amen. 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 My hands in the sanctuary. I lift my hands to give him the glory.
me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, know where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. babes and suckling 
the Lord has ordained strength. When the children came up here and they were ministering to us, and they said, Father, consecrate our men, our, our fathers, to you and use them for your glory. She, I just told my husband, I said, they just confirmed that message. So I just want to bless the name of the Lord because the Spirit of God is one. So today I have come with a charge to the men. Not a preaching, but a charge to the men in the house today. And I've got a message that I've titled, The Power of a Broken Man. The Power of a Broken Man. When we look around today, we look at society today, you don't need people, anyone to tell you that things have degenerated. Things have broken. Men are lovers of themselves. People don't even regard God. Things, abominable things that you cannot even think of. You watch some shows on television and you feel like throwing up. But that is the society today. But I know the heartbeat of God is that things change for better. That is the heartbeat of God. And I know that for God to do things in our society, he's going to use people. He's going to use our men in particular today. So I'm going to address our men today. Because I can, I, I, from, from the things we've read in the Bible, we know the importance of men. The thing that is going on in the society today, the government, they don't have the solution to it. Everybody seems to be confused. But we know the way. We know the answer. We know Jesus is the answer to the world today. And so today, I'm just going to charge the men to take their rightful place. For the things that God wants to do in our society today, he cannot use just any, anyone. Because things that he wants to do cannot be done in the strength of a man. It has to be done in the strength of the Almighty. How do you receive the strength of the Almighty? You need to be broken. You need to be broken. God, the, the men in this world, men in this church I'm addressing you today, you're so key to the move of God. You are so key. And so it is not, it is not uh, out of place when God gave us uh, a word in this church this year on restoration. Things need to be restored. So men, you are key to restoration in the home. You are key to restoration in the church. You are key to restoration in the society. And you are key to restoration in the nation at large. In the Bible, I'm just going to quickly read. I'm going to read uh, Judges. That's not our main text. But just to buttress the point that when things are going wrong, when God needs things to change, he uses men. So in the book of Judges, chapter 6, just to show you. In the book of Judges, chapter 6, I'll quickly read from verse 11. It says... Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abzerite, while his son Gideon threshed with in the winepress, in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Where are all the miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall, have, you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. So this is an example of when people cry out unto the Lord because of the things that were going on, because they were in bondage. The Midianites, the Bible says the Midianites, they're so wicked. What did they do to the children of Israel? Because they're under bondage. They will let the children of Israel to plant, to sow. When it comes to the time of harvest, the Bible says that the Midianites will come upon them like locusts and they would destroy everything. And Israel was very, very impoverished by that, at that time. And this, when I was reading that place, it just dawned on me that this is situation with some men. You work so hard. You know you're not a lazy man. You work so hard. You try to bring things together, or sometimes you put things together. But it seems as if wind has just blown over it. 
like the spirit of devourer. But we pronounce today by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that no more shall this happen in the name of Jesus. You shall sow and you shall reap and you shall enjoy the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. So I believe the, the same way that God used Gideon, God is going to use our men as his instrument of restoration in this end time. So, let's go to our main text for this message, which is it's just two texts. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 12. The book of John chapter 12. So like I said, for God to use the men, men that God is going to use, they're going to be broken men. Broken men. Men who are broken. Men whose, whose backbone is God. Men who don't depend on their strength. Men who have seen Jesus. In the book of uh, John chapter 12, I'll read from verse 17. It says, Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said amongst themselves, You see that you are not accomplishing nothing. Look at the world. Look, the world has gone after him. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at to worship at the feast then came then they came to Philip who was from Bethsaida of Galilee and asked him saying sir we wish to see Jesus Philip came and told Andrew in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus but Jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Unless the seed of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it, pro it, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Those are two Six. Galatians chapter 2 I'll read from verse 19 it says for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God this is Paul speaking there I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me that is the way forward for God to use you you need to die to self we need to die this message is not just to men it's for everybody but today it, we are charging the men because it's their day today for God to really really use you you need to die to the flesh it says except the grain of wheat falls to the ground and die it remains alone what God wants to do through you men is beyond you and your family is for generations to come and at this time, I just want to charge the youth as well. This message is not just for, for the daddies, for the granddads in the house. It's for also for young men. Some of you, you are just in the, at the university, and some have just finished their A-levels. Some have just finished your, your GCSEs, and you have so much time in your hands. Message of brokenness, it applies to everyone. God wants to use you. God wants to use you mightily, just like he used Daniel. Daniel was a man in the Bible who set himself apart for the things of God. He set himself apart, and God says, I delight in Daniel. There are some things that we, as your parents, we cannot attain to, or we are unable to attain to because of the way we've lived our lives in the past. Because of, you know, when you don't know things, you, you just do things. But you have the privilege at a very young age to be under the administration of the word of God. So you have no excuse. And I believe that God is taking you to some high places. But before you can get to those high places, you need to be people who are broken. People that God can address, God can speak to you, and you'll be just, you will just comply with what God says. You will not argue with the will of God. So brokenness applies to every one of us. 
So, except the wheat of grain falls to the ground and die, and dies, it remains alone. And Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but the life which I now live in the flesh, I live through the Son of God who gave himself for me. The life I now live now. Are you living the life of Christ now? If you look around, there is so much hurt, so much pain, even in the church. Why? Because the church is filled with Christians who are unbroken, converts who are unbroken. It applies to every one of us. We are not there. We'll continue to work at it because we are all work in progress. But we need to take note that the reason why we see things not quite right, when you see some things going on, you start to wonder, is this person truly born again? It's, it's because we are Christians that are not broken. And God cannot use an unbroken vessel. It is impossible. Because you will make a shipwreck of the ministry. Being broken in the hands of God is so beautiful. Because we become easy to mold. We just, we'll just be like, pot, uh, like clay in the hands of the potter. We no longer question God's will. And we allow him to have his way in our lives. God will have his way in our lives. You see, for God to bless a man is not a problem. For God to bless you is nothing to God. But surely, for God to use a man, it takes time to build that vessel. If you want God to use you, even as even the children have said, that we consecrate the fathers, we have to set ourselves apart. As men, you need to set yourself apart for God to use you, for God to consecrate you. Let's look at the life of Joseph as an example. In, in, in Genesis chapter 45, God has a great plan for Joseph. A very good plan for Joseph. In fact, the plan that God has for Joseph transcends generation. When Joseph was having the dreams and telling his parents, his brothers, he thought, he didn't think much of it, but he knew God was going to do something in his life. But God had a very, very big plan. And we can see when Joseph from his father's house, he was sold. He went from his father's house into the pit. From the pit to Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to the palace. So when his brethren, when they came, when they came to Egypt, by that time when Joseph had become the prime minister, God, man full of wisdom, who has given them the wisdom of how to preserve the, the lives of people through the wisdom of God. When his brothers came, they didn't recognize him. So when Joseph said, when he saw them, the Bible says, Joseph wept aloud and everybody heard. And he told people to go out. And then he moved close to his brothers. He said, it is I, Joseph, that you sold into Egypt. He now told them, he said, don't be angry with yourselves. Or don't be grieved with yourself. You have meant it for evil. God has sent me to preserve life. If Joseph had not gone through that journey of brokenness, we can see that by what Joseph said, there was no iota of bitter bitterness in him. If we look at ourselves today, probably if it was me, it's payback time. They have come now looking for food and I am in charge. But Joseph had gone through the process of brokenness. There was not a single blood of bitterness in him. And so he was able to welcome his brothers and tell them, don't be grieved with yourself. God has sent me ahead to preserve life. That is what God wants to do in our men. God wants to use you, but he wants you to be broken. As a broken man, what are, your, what are the attributes of a broken man? What, what is the power that a broken man has? A broken man connects with heaven on his knees. A man that is broken, on his knee, you connect with heaven. You don't, you, you don't, Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't fight with things in the physical. You go on your knees. That is the power of a broken man. A broken man knows the mind of God because he dwells in the world daily. So he knows the mind of God because he's connected to God. A broken man does not struggle to do God's will. You don't question the word of God. You don't struggle to do the will of God. Because a broken man's life is a living sacrifice, it decrees a thing and it is established. Sometimes, most of the times, we quote scriptures and we wonder why scriptures are not working for us. There is always a condition to it. 
you live your life the way you, you want, the scripture cannot work. But as a broken man, because your life is pleasing, it is holy, it is accepted to God. When you decree a thing, heaven must back you up. A broken man is not involved in the pulling down of the church. A broken man is not involved in the pulling down of the church. Rather, you build the church because you know that one day every man will stand before God and every man's work will be tested. And the Bible says, what a loss it will be if your work is tested and it is burnt with fire. All, all over the scriptures, there are so many emphases on brokenness. We know, sometimes we read scriptures, but we don't really look deep into what the scripture is saying. Many of us, so many times, including myself, have read Luke 9, 16, about the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus Christ told his disciples that he should sit the, the men down, sit the children, the men down, excuse me, when he was about to feed them. And the disciples say, uh, said to Jesus Christ that, let the people go because we don't have enough. But there was a particular boy with, with um, five loaves and two fish there. And Jesus Christ said they should bring it. And they brought that to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and Jesus blessed it and broke it. It was after the breaking that he started to multiply. Most of us, Jesus has blessed us, but we didn't wait for the other part to be broken. So as we pray to God, God bless me. Pray to God, God break me. When we talk about God break me, it's not that something bad, something terrible is going to happen to you. It's just that there are some things, there are some areas where we think we're strong. Some of us, because we have possessions, that's our strength. Nothing, everything, Jesus can have everything. I give my life to Jesus, I worship you. But this area, mm, 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 you're still strong in yourself. You're very, very strong. And God cannot use strong, strong men. God wants to use a man that is broken. So that when he says, go this way, you don't argue or you don't reason it out. Paul says in the Bible, he says, when it pleased God, who has called me, to, who separated me from my mother's womb to do his will, I do not confer with flesh and blood. When God tells you to do something, because you know his heart, you know his mind, it might seem foolish in the natural, but you just follow what God has said to you. Mark chapter 14, verse 3. Mary, she came in with the alabaster box full of sweet perfumed oil. Nobody could smell the, smell the sweet aroma of that perfume until the Bible says she broke it upon Jesus. She broke it and she anointed Jesus Christ. It was then, the Bible says, and the whole place was filled with the sweet perfume. There is sweet perfume in each and every one of you men. But until you are broken, nobody can perceive this sweet aroma. Nobody. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 19, it says, the, the heart, the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the manifestation of sons of God. People, people are tired of what is going on. People don't have the answers. People don't know the way. And so they, they're groaning. Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And the Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This treasure is in you. But how? How would they see this treasure? How would they see this power? Until you are broken. Brokenness is such a great thing in the hands of God. How do we become broken? You live your life daily before the Father. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says... This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you can observe to do what has been written there. For it is then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So in order to be broken, you need to live before his face daily. Let your life be a living sacrifice. Do not be conformed to this world. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed, but by the renewing of your minds. That is the only way that will not conform to this world. You see, we have so much pressure on social media. So much pressure for the young ones. Pressure to comply. Pressure to, to beat up. Pressure to look this way. Pressure to please everybody. And then people turn to things that is not right. All in the name of being acceptable, acceptable before men. No. 
the only one you need to be acceptable to is God. And it says in Romans chapter 2, by the renewing of your mind, so that you may do that which is pleasing, that which is acceptable to the Lord. How do you become broken? James chapter 4 verse 6. Stay humble before the Lord. The Lord gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. The Lord resists the proud. Sometimes we look at ourselves and you think, well, I'm doing fine. I don't think I'm proud. My husband and I, there was something that happened between us. And then he apologized. He apologized in the morning. He apologized in the afternoon. He apologized in the evening. No, I was still thinking about it, me. And what did he do? When he was talking to me, he raised his voice. He shouted, ah! why did he shout at me? Me, I don't like people shouting at me. <laughs> me. Hmm. I was going on and on and on to myself and the Holy Spirit said, you're very proud. Who are you? He shouted at you. A lot of people are proud. You think you're humble because you kneel to people, you greet them, you in the church. You think you're humble. <laughs> Humility is not in kneeling to people. You can kneel to people, you can wipe their feet, and deep inside your heart, what you are saying is as you are a scorpion inside. We need to check ourselves. That is the reason why we don't see the manifestation of the power of God in the church today. The mere fact that you can read the scripture, you are very intelligent, you are very eloquent. That is what we see in the church today. People are orators. They can minister the gospel. The mere fact that you can minister the gospel does not mean you are chosen if you have not been tested through humility. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, in the Bible, it says he humbled himself even to the point of death. And that's the reason why God himself gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and is Lord forever. There is no controversy about that. We need to check ourselves. We need to check our lives. I don't have much to say, but we need to think about the issue of brokenness. Check your life. Are you truly broken? To conclude it all, look at the man Moses in the Bible. At the age of 40, we know God has a great plan for Moses. God has destined him from when he was born that he's going to deliver Israel. He might not have known it, but as time goes on, he was being groomed in the palace, strong, agile. As time goes on, he started to feel for his people, the Israelites. They were in bondage. They were being used, beaten day and night. And then one day he saw an, an Hebrew man and, an, and one Egyptian. They were fighting. And then Moses went and he struck that Egyptian and the Egyptian died. And because Moses thought this had gone out, so he fled. A strong man, he fled and he went into the wilderness, into the, into the Midianite, into the home of uh, a Midianite, in the wilderness, Jethro. And then he was there for another 40 years. By the time Moses spent 40 years living with his father-in-law, I don't know anything that can break you more than you marrying a, a woman and then you live with his father, with her father, and then you work for her father. If you are not broken, you can never be broken. So this man <laughs> lived and worked for his father-in-law. He was there, you know, doing all sorts of things. Moses, for 40 years in the wilderness, became very broken. And so at the age of 80, when God called him and told him, now go back to Egypt to deliver my people. Because he was so broken, he said, who am I? I cannot even speak. And when he got to, got to, got to Egypt, he saw the suffering of the people, and he went to Pharaoh. He said, let my people go. And we know what happened. Moses, when he was at the age of 40, he struck an Egyptian dead. 
So if God was going to use him in his own strength, how many is he going to kill with his hands? I don't know. But at the age of 80, as a broken 80-year-old man, he, stand, he stood before the Red Sea, and he did not just kill an Egyptian, he drowned the whole army of the Egyptian. That is what God can do through a broken man. The things that we run about uh, for, the things that we want to do, the things that God wants to do is beyond us. If God opened our eyes to see where he's taking us, it is beyond what you can do in your strength. But we need to be broken. We need to be broken. God will not give power to a man who has no rule over his spirit. You will be a walking danger to people around you. But God wants to break us. So in whatever way, when we pray, God bless me. Pray, God break me. So as we celebrate you men today, please remember, you are the key to what God wants to do in this end time. The Bible refers to the apostles, to, to the disciples of Jesus Christ. The Bible refers to them as men who have turned the world upside down. Twelve broken men. Can you imagine 200 broken men from New Covenant Church? 3,000 all over the world, all over England, all the churches, 10 million men, 10 million broken men, and Jesus will come the following day. Because <laughs> there will be so much power. So as we celebrate you today, my charge to you is to please allow God to break you. He will speak to you. He will tell you what to do. And he will use you greatly for his glory. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to you. We thank God for the lives of our men today. In fact, I don't envy Brother Victor standing here. It's such a, a lot of work, coordinating the choir, coordinating media. It is just so much. But in, uh, let me just cut it short now. And um, we want to recognize some, a few men here that represent many other men. Okay, so don't feel left out if I have not called you up. But we have gifts for all the men, and I hope um, they're giving out the gifts as I'm speaking to the men. I know we're all thinking about the food, the love feast. Please don't just run away after the service and take something as takeaway. We don't want takeaways today. We're sitting together, enjoying ourselves with our men. You know, thanking the Lord for all he has done. We have not lost any of our men or any male gender. Ah, we thank God. God is, is worthy to be praised. Put our hands together for the lives of our men. They will live and they will live forever and ever and ever. They will be strong. The Lord will shield them. Hallelujah. So I would like to call on Brother Wale Oyebanjo. He does so much for the church. You know, this is his gift. I would like to call on Brother Deji Lewis that coordinates the president of Covenant Men. He does so much on the ground, coordinating all the men to be in blue today hasn't been easy. And he did that. So those are one of the things he does. And this is his lovely wife here. <laughs> please, please, please. We, we still need you on the stage, please. We don't want you to go. Thank you. Thank you. We don't want you to go. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. Um, we would like to call on Brother Solomon. He works with the children at the back. And he's done so much with our children. What a wonderful man with a great smile on his face. Always smiling. And the children love him. And the women that work with him love him also. We thank God. We really do thank God for his life. Now... <laughs> We've saved the last. Hmm. What can I say? This person is such a marvelous person. This person, he's the back of many homes here. This person you can call on day and night and he will pick up your phone. And he will make sure that he answers to whatever is bothering your mind. This person, this person, if you're worried about ministry, 
if you don't know what to do, where to go, how your life is going about, he will put you in the right place. He doesn't favor anybody. This person is Ogramaganta. Ogangagagagramali. This person, this person, with all honor, all the men, all the women, please rise. With all honor, clapping, praising God for this particular person. This man, this man is a man of all men. I call on Pastor Olutunde Aikomo. Our one and only pastor. He takes all the problems. He takes our shouting. He takes our... He's the last person to be hugged in the church. He's the last person to be handshaked. He's such a wonderful father. We thank you, sir. We thank you and we bless your name. We bless the, Lord, the Lord's name. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you because we can actually call you Father. Some people know you as different things. Some don't even know you at all. But we stand here today by your grace, by your love, and we call you Father. You're a good, good Father. We bless your holy name. We ask, oh God, as we go into this new week that you will go with us. We, we thank you because you are ahead of us, oh God. You know the end from the beginning. We bless your holy name, oh God. Father, Lord, our week will be filled with miracles. Our week will be filled with testimonies. Our week will be filled with your presence, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore.